me, Shaba the commitment phobe now, still has those thoughts. There are plenty of times where we've gotten into arguments yeah, and we've been really honest about it. Hormones, babe. Hormones. Hormones. <laughs> Throw that piece of popcorn at them. I'm going to be reading the comments to see if people disagree with me or not. I, I agree with you. I'm not disagreeing with yeah. you. Anyway, <laughs> I'd have wanted to dump a drink of ice cold coke on her. <laughs> this is freaking spicy. Dude. Yeah. Whoa. You're through to 1-800-DRAMA. The show where you show your biggest dilemmas. And we help you navigate them. I'm Sharba. And I'm Jamie. Come join us as we help people figure out if they are the drama. Because sometimes you just need an outside perspective. And we can all expand our own mindsets along the way. Wait, am I the drama? Red flag, green flag, Sharba. Biting ice cream. Ooh. <laughs> and that's the sound you make if you bite ice cream. <laughs> um, I don't know. I can't. Mm. It makes my teeth feel all kinds of funny. Same. But I don't think it, I judge people if they do. You wouldn't judge someone if they had one of those like soft serve Mr. Whippy in a cone uh, ice creams uh, <laughs> and they just brought it to their mouth and went oh, and chomped down on that thing. If they chop, like even just thinking about it, it makes my teeth go <gasps> and like my fat go <gasps> because it makes my body act a certain way. Like yeah. my teeth feel it like second hand. <laughs> But um, no, I don't think I judge. Like, I don't think it's a flag. Gr Look, if you could do it, green flag. No, if I see people biting ice cream, <laughs> is that red flag yeah, it's too uncomfortable. <laughs> I don't understand what your teeth are made of. Wow. Can you, can you, maybe it's coming from jealousy. Are you red flag envious right now? No, I just, it's also just something you lick. You don't bite chocolate mousse. Maybe you do. Do you, do you bite trifle? Like, do you bite custard? Maybe maybe some people do. Who are we to judge if they love it? No. Red <laughs> flag. No, okay, I'll give it an amber flag. Fair enough, fair enough. Let us know, Peaches, if you um, yourself are an ice cream biter. Mm. 1-800-DRAMA-POD. Let's go. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Any updates this week, my love? Well, what about your music, Shaba? <gasps> yes, I do have a new song out. I'm actually working on the new one that's going to be coming out. I say the new one. This is like the second song I ever worked on. But um, it was a very different process. It's one that I'm really proud of sharing. Mm -hmm. So there, there is a new one coming as well. My my song, my girlfriend, is out now. If you want to take a listen. Mm -hmm. um, but also before the end of this month, there will be another two two songs in one month. Wow, spoiling people, aren't you? Uh, I know. I'm excited. It's mm -hmm. going to be the last original for this EP, Inside Voices. So I'm very excited. You have an update too, don't you? The wonderful Jamie here has only gone and written a book. Hasn't he? Well, that's not really an update. It's nothing <laughs> no, new. No, but the fact that it's launching in the States is an update. Yes, it's published in the States on May 7th. And May then... May 7th be with you. In June, we will be in the States on a little book tour. Sharon and Jamie on tour. Woo -woo. It's going to be fun. More details to follow. For sure. But if you want to, like, take a look and prep yourself and get excited, then go and follow Jamie on all the socials and do the lovely things and you'll, you'll and get be able to get book. some tickets. Yes. I'm excited. All right, now that that's out of the way, are you ready to go fishing? A <gasps> fat asshole. Drama, Shaba. Asshole. How many times? Oh, uh, drama. Am I the drama for, quote, ruining my mum's engagement party after she abandoned me when I was 11? Oh, that is drama, dude. That's a lot in a title. That is. That's like... Well, wow. Okay, let's read on. I'm a 17-year-old man, and I have a strained relationship with my mum, 35, after an incident that happened about six years ago. Do the math for me. Oh, that was when they were 11. And they okay, were cool. Blah, blah, blah. And the mum was 29. Yes. Cool. Wow, my you age You can now. math. Could you imagine yeah, if we had, had an 11-year-old now? No. Wow. Wait, when did she get pregnant? 18. That's young. Yeah. Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Okay, okay. My mum was super strict and a helicopter parent, Ooh. so we fought a lot over my grades and the trouble that I got into at school. She'd essentially abandoned me, signing over custody to my dad after I told her something along the lines of, I hate you, and I wish I lived with dad. Okay. Typical things an angsty preteen say to their parents. Hmm, okay. But that fight seemed to have broken her and she cried before dropping me off at my dad's apartment. I thought it wouldn't be a big deal and I'd just see her the next day after she proved her point, but she left me there. Oh. Wow. So wait, 29, 11 year old. Yes. That, I, I totally appreciate that it hurts. I do think that's quite an overreaction though. It feels like something that a lot of kids that age would say in the situation of divorce. You know, like if they get fed up with 
the parent they're living with at one point. They're like, I hate you. I want to live with other parents. I mean, even not it just, kids of divorce. I can imagine kids always saying this at some point. Yeah, just I, to try and hurt your parents, right? I said some stuff. Yeah, I've said stuff like this too. Yeah. You're just a silly kid. Yeah. And I kind of feel like if an 11-year-old is saying that, we need to be a bit careful to not, like, do such big consequences. I don't know. This feels odd to me. Yes. Should we read on? Mm -hmm. Okay. After that, things got essentially worse for me. My grades dropped and I kept getting into trouble at school, almost to the point where I was kicked out. My dad had never had job security, so money was tight. His girlfriend was also not fond of me, saying that I was, quote in bunnies, dumped on them. I wanted to go back to live with my mum. I thought to apologise, but my mum had essentially moved on with her life. She went back to college mm. to get her degree and was always studying and later on was focused on her new work. On the weekends, I would go to see her. Things were very tense between us. She tried so hard to be the quote unquote fun parent, eating takeout and leaving me to do what I wanted, but it was so unlike her and we became more estranged. This is weird to me. I don't yeah. know why, but I'm feeling it's not sitting right with me. I even feel, so this is a 17 year old giving an account, right? Yeah. Did, did he apologize? Cause he's like, I thought to apologize, but you were busy. Yeah. And it's like uh, beforehand as so was like, Typical things that kids say. I feel like that maybe there's no remorse, and I, I don't know if there should be at this point. I just feel like there's a vibe to me where accountability is not being taken, and it's just something that I thought I'd mention because it's something I'm noticing. Yeah, it's difficult though because like how much accountability can a eleven an eleven year old take? This is a seventeen year old though talking oh, about. Oh, talking it, about it in the like, past. Retrospectively, yeah. But yeah. And also, you're still seventeen, like compared to an adult. Yeah. And I'm just trying to think at the time, like, that that's a child that's been brought into the world and is probably feeling unwanted by so both parents. by both parents. That's a really hard position to be in. Yeah. 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 Okay. Read on. Yeah. Whew. Three years ago, she started dating Paul, who's 39. Okay, so 39, mum's currently 35. This was three years ago. Right. A widower with two daughters who were nine and 13. Mm-hmm. Gosh, these ages. I'm having to like math so <laughs> bad right here. So the two daughters now, so they're nine and 13 I think... when OP is 17. Okay, so yes. they're younger, but not like super, super younger. Got it. I mean, fairly younger, but yeah, not, not like, like babies. Six. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. She, as in mum, started treating his daughters like they were her own and they started calling her mummy, which irritated me. Right. Okay. Eventually they moved into my mum's house and changed my childhood bedroom into one of their daughter's rooms. Okay. okay. I was livid when I found out, saying some mean things about the girls and refused to go back there for my mum's weekends, but she was confused as to why I was acting this way. Oh. This is messy. It sounds like it's just gotten progressively worse because we're, we're talking about, like, a young child, like a preteen, who's struggling to communicate and has parents who are struggling to... Communicate. Communicate <laughs> with each other and with the child. Yeah. Yeah. I mean... How would you feel if you didn't live there and your childhood bedroom was turned into a room for two kids who had moved in and were living there permanently? Yeah. I kind of feel like it's it, it makes sense for the parents to have done that. But I can also understand why as a 17 year old who has feelings of abandonment and let's face it, trauma, yeah. um, this would feel more personal than it would just make it actually worse. Would be. Yeah. Oh. And especially seeing as it sounds like he tried to mend that bridge and who? tried to OP. get back into his mum's life before the two girls came along. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And especially if he was staying there on weekends in his room, that must feel really tricky to then have that room taken away and not have a space in your mum's house. I do totally agree with you. I think one of the things I'm struggling with is that, like, I, I feel like even when he said that the mum is trying, mm. he's not accepting it. I can't see what would make this 17-year-old happy. You know, because he's saying things like, she tried really hard to be fun, we'd eat takeout, she let me do what I want, but it was very unlike her. So I'm like, you were having a go at her beforehand because she's a helicopter parent, and you don't like it and you say you hate it. Mm. Now that you are spending time with her, she's trying to put effort into allowing you to do what you want, and you're like, I don't like it. So I'm, I'm, I'm kind of struggling. I, I can't really see the but intentions. Maybe it's because the trying to be the fun parent didn't feel like being the parent. Maybe that didn't feel like his mum to him. Maybe he but he didn't like his mum to him because she was a helicopter parent and they fought a lot. Maybe there's regret over that. Maybe. Like, it could have been like a feeling like the grass is greener kind of vibe, realising it's not, and then kind of feeling like a door is shut on you to get back in emotionally and literally. 
So what should mum be doing? I don't know, because if he's not... It's difficult, because Maybe if he's not chat, expressed right? to her, yeah. mum, I'm sorry about what I did and I really want to come and live with you again. If he said that and she's like, no, then a bit bizarre, because like you can't just abandon your child like that. But if mm. he's not expressed that, maybe she doesn't know. Yeah, but because he said, I wanted to go and live with my mum. Yeah. I thought to apologise, but she'd moved on. This so is did you have that conversation? complicated one. Absolutely. And I, I have to point out as well, like, I'm not saying that the 17-year-old is bad. I feel like I'm being quite judgy and harsh, like, my mouth is saying that. But in my head, I don't know if I'm communicating it well enough. I do feel for this guy. Like, I realise this is very tricky. I'm just mm. struggling. I'm like, well, how do I fix this? And I'm struggling to understand the want, let alone how to fix. I think, bit like pure. I mean, a, a, like not parent yet, mm-hmm. but I don't. I don't think I could drop my child off permanently at somebody else's That's, to then raise yeah, them. Big like for I mom. would want to. The, the child wouldn't need to come and say, "I'm so sorry. I want to come back and live with you." For me to try and mend that with that like independently from what the kid says unless they're showing me clear signs they don't want anything to do with me Mm. i would be trying to mend that as an adult as the parent to repair that relationship without them having to say something see it's very interesting because we come at this from two perspectives i hear your perspective Mm. from my perspective i i am a child of divorce Mm. and i recall saying when i was living at one party i don't want to be here i want to go and i wasn't allowed to to move i mm. tried four or five times before the parent in mind was like you know what go i wash your hand i, wa- I wash my hands off this situation you are clearly significantly wanting to not be here go then yeah and that constant not allowing me to go initially was was a big problem for me obviously like this is we were all in different scenarios and i have to say that I've did so many moves between my parents, mm. the grass was never greener. <laughs> yeah. That's the whole point, right? And I, I do think even if you are a child of divorce, the right thing to do as parents is to make sure that you're present at all times um, and to just let the kids sort of figure that out. But um, I wonder if maybe, I, I don't know, but I wonder if mum being like, you know what, off you pop, was a straw that broke the camel's back as opposed to a one-off i still don't yeah. think it's right of mum to have left though yeah she should still have made herself open to communication but I, I i kind of see that as that's what she was trying to do later on and op's still not happy so I yeah. I'm, just, I'm a bit confused i want i want well, let's read on yeah but i'm <laughs> i'm just feeling very heartbroken for both of them right yeah now. ah okay right op says because of this fight as in the one when the girls moved in and yes. OP trash-talked the new girls for taking over the bedroom. Um, she thought that I wouldn't be attending the engagement party when she announced that her and Paul would be getting married. Besides, she didn't want me there to ruin the perfect picture of her new family. So I made it a point to go for the party and called her out on her behaviour. <sighs> I can see why OP's hurt, but that's maybe not the right time. I think there's been other opportunities to call out the behaviour. I'm also reading this. Did I un- Have I understood this correctly? You've thought OP's gone, she didn't want me there because she's got her wonderful new family now, which yeah. may not be what she's thinking, but that's how you feel she's thinking. Totally fair. So you went not because you wanted to support them, but because you wanted to make it horrible for her. Yeah. Because well, I'm like, no. mate, you're 17. I get it. You were a kid when you were 11 and this issue started. I get it. She's not been a great parent, but you're old enough to know that that's not a good thing to do. I can't tell if the besides she didn't want me there to ruin the pic, like the perfect picture of her new family is, as you said, like, is that OP's in his head or is that genuinely something the mum has expressed? And then going to make a point because you feel like you're unwanted somewhere is an interesting stance. <laughs> that, yeah. Yeah. Interesting in bad. Like, I am judging at yeah. this point. I don't know, something's just not sitting right with this account. Mm. <sighs> we'll read on. I wanted to confront her, says OP, and tell her that she wouldn't have to bother with me after I go off to college, but I may have taken it a tad too far. Mm. And you know, if someone like this, who's not being able to communicate properly, is saying, may have taken it a bit too far, you totally took it too far, right? Oh, everyone keeps talking about how Paul's daughters were like her children and how it would be when she has more kids and it snapped something in me. I called her a horrible parent. I told her she was trying to replace me with these little brats after she'd abandoned me, along with some other insults that I don't really remember. I feel like he does remember, I but feel they're like worse you remember, than the others. Yeah. 
Paul kicked me and my dad out saying that I was an asshole for making his fiance and the girls cry and ruining the engagement party. He said that I wouldn't be allowed at the wedding unless I called to apologize. I may have taken it a bit too far, but my dad agrees that she had it coming after abandoning a young child at an age where I needed my mother. So am I the drummer? Should I apologize? I think they need to apologize to each other. I think that was the wrong time, wrong place, and there needs to be an apology for emotions spilling over in that moment, in that way. But I think OP is within his right to express to his mum how it felt when he was 11 and how that came about and how he's feeling about it now. And the mum does have some things to explain, apologise for. Oh, I think the mum has a huge amount to apologise yeah, for, yeah. I, I just, I am with you though. I feel like there's there's something missing in this story. I don't know if we're not getting the full account of either parental treatment or of, the, of OP's childhood behaviour, but something's not adding up fully. I feel you. But there just needs to be a big old family therapy session. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with this. I'm also really judging the dad for being like, oh, she had it coming. That's absolutely not what you should be saying to another co-parent. Yeah. That is not how you help maintain healthy relationships, even if you don't like your co-parent for whatever reason or judge them for their past behaviours. How dare you try and cause further resentment now? Mm. You can't call yourself a good parent and be doing that. That pisses me off. For me, this is pretty clear. Everybody sucks Everybody here. sucks here. You too. Yeah, same. Oh. I do think going into the past... Except for Paul. Yeah, going into the past, it is more so on the mum. It, 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 like We have to take what's in front of us. If what had happened is OP kind of snapped over some helicopter parenting, said some things that I think you'd struggle to find someone who didn't say that when they were a preteen. Yes. Those kind of things to a parent. And that is what made her bundle an 11-year-old child into a car and be like, here, go live with your dad then, and not go back on that after calming down. That feels really I feel like there's something else going on, like a resentment from the mum and not wanting to be a parent at that moment in time because OP then said... Or maybe OP was significantly more troublesome than he's letting on. Yeah. And the mum was just like, you know what, I just can't deal with this. You clearly don't want to be here and I'm not what's good for you right now because things are going not fantastic. The concept of giving up on a child is so difficult i know there are some rare circumstances where parents just can't cope with a child's behavior and they need most likely professional help see it's really interesting you're saying this because sorry i didn't mean to cut you off continue no but i'm just saying i think those are very very extreme cases and most of the time it requires like it the behavior is just going to get worse if a parent full out rejects the child you're talking about it though as abandoning a child like giving Mm. up on a child what i was reading that with and maybe this is me just you know being naive and optimistic as i am (laughs) um i was kind of reading that as you clearly don't want to be here what's best for you is sometimes the best thing to do Um, is to not force someone to be with you if they clearly have such resentment do you see what i mean yes like sometimes it's not abandonment if it's the right thing to do it's letting go to love yes i do see what you're saying i think what went through my head though is what if that had just been a the parents weren't divorced and OP had just gone, I hate you guys. I wish I didn't live here. You wouldn't just What drop are you a kid gonna do outside? then? You're not just gonna put him in a car and drop him off. Like... Yes, I totally hear you. And as a child in that position, that's where the grass is greener, I think, always comes mm. in. Because to me, whenever bad things happened, I was constantly like, Gah, bloody hell, if I wasn't here, because yeah. there was that other option, this would not happen. And I, I w- I'm not even gonna say that as a child. Like, me, Shaba, the commitment phobe now, still has those thoughts. There are plenty of times where we've gotten into arguments yeah, and we've been really honest about it. Like, it's not an unhealthy thing to think. I think it's a very normal thing to think. It can be unhealthy if you act on it in the wrong ways. But whenever we argue, if we have a particularly bad argument, I'm like, Jesus, what if there's someone out there who I could be with that's not like that? And you've thought the same about me. And what if I just put you in a car and be like, <laughs> hey, go, go live with these friends? Yeah, my point no, is, if there is a joking. choice, you're more likely to think that. I don't think this would have happened if they were okay. still in a relationship I do together. see what you're saying. I think without being aware of any other behaviours going on, mm-hmm. I struggle to see how the mum instantly just went, fine. I'm yes. dropping it. And then it you. wasn't no, just I, that. I agree with you, though. This it's, is bad at the mum. It mom. then sounds like there was a real distancing 
and it maybe took a while before they started seeing each other regularly again. But it's funny because in these situations, you're right, you can still see it two ways. It might be that, like, because we, we have no idea, it could be that mum in this situation was just like, you know what, I did a terrible job with mm. son. This really sucks. I'm going to make a better life for myself and a better life for my kids. She's gone away. She's got a focus for herself. She's found kids and she, like, a partner who has kids. And she's like, I will treat you better. And that's not an inherently bad thing that she's trying to do right by a family mm. with a second chance that she's gotten. But yeah. it also, I can understand how that would then make the first child feel bitter to yeah. be like, why didn't I get that? Yeah, oh, you're right. Yeah, Big family therapy okay. session. Yeah, everyone sucks. And it's just that the bit that's sticking with me, though, sorry to go on, but it's that I thought to apologise, but my mum had essentially moved on with her life. That came after saying I wanted to go back to live with my mum. That really does make me feel like there was at least a period of time where they did not talk at all. Yeah, it seems like it. Because he says my yeah. grades dropped more. I got into more trouble at school. I was almost kicked out of school. My dad and I his girlfriend wasn't okay with me. That's what's difficult for me to understand why the mum would do that. Over, I, you, like, uh, just complete. Again, like, I was assuming no... that maybe he didn't want to speak with her. Yeah, I know. I just, that... yeah, I think we are seeing this from different, different perspectives, lenses. and yeah. I think there's there'll be there'll be elements of truth to both. Yeah, well, lenses. I, I think that's a lesson in itself, isn't it? Like, we need to we do need to be careful with yeah. like, these super complicated stories. We we don't know the real the reality of what's going on. Yeah, but there are three sides to every story: yours, yes. theirs, and the truth. And we need to bear in mind that there's a duality involved in all of these situations. Mm -hmm. You can be doing both good and bad things at the same time. Yes. I Every hope this gets better. I everybody feel like needs to chat. Better. Everybody does need to chat. Okay. Should we oh. read some comments? Yeah. One commenter says, Jesus Christ, so many of you in here are holding an 11-year-old child to a standard we don't normally hold adults to. Kids are allowed to make mistakes. Adults are supposed to be there for their children and get them help when they need it. Agreed. I agree with that. I'm I also reading the one underneath. I also agree with the follow-up <laughs> comment to that one that says, but at 17, you should know that it's an asshole move to ruin a party for people who have nothing to do with the issue you have. That's where OP is. Also agreed. Are. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 I'm not judging the 11-year-old OP yeah. at all for saying what he said. Yeah, I'm not That either. happens when you're a kid. Mm -hmm. I'm judging the mum at that point for abandoning or yeah. for making, in OP's words abandoning which is absolutely how he feels and therefore mum needs to take accountability for that mm. but i am judging 17 year old for their actions now yeah it's like imagine if everybody abandoned their child when the child said like i hate you i don't want to live here or acted out for a period of time there would be a lot of abandoned kids there would the be yeah because I, I think it's very rare for kids not to have that time period where they act out hormones babe hormones, <laughs> hormones. <laughs> i really hope the situation gets better for you though op I think some accountability and some growing up is required on everybody's side. Mm -hmm. Am I the drama for throwing a piece of popcorn at someone who kept using their phone during a movie? <laughs> oh my gosh. I what? feel like we went super deep to like super trivial. Why is my automatic <laughs> reaction just to be like, of course, you shouldn't be using your phone during a movie. Throw that piece of popcorn at them. <laughs> but then I'm also like, maybe not the best way okay we'll read on i'm already <laughs> having so many judgments op says we went to see june 2 highly recommended last night in a vip theater with comfy seats and table service which i mentioned because to attend you must be 19 plus they serve real drinks oh, 19 real plus drinks. is a weird age yeah it is because it'd be normally 18 plus in the uk or right? 21 plus in the states yeah also june 2 i'm ex i'm excited i want to see it there's been so much hype we need to see june uh, yeah i haven't seen june either okay so i'm, I'm intrigued and then we watched July. Also, a VIP theatre. What is this? I think it's probably just one of those, like, like every man. Like, oh, just I special love experience. The yeah. yeah. Table service. I've never seen tables in a cinema. They it, don't mean actual tables. No, do they? they mean oh, every. Me funny. <laughs> it's like an every man where from your seat you can order food and they bring it to you. It just means that someone brings you food. Right. Or drinks. I mean, they should call it lap service then. Because there's well, there, no tables. There were little side tables to put your food on. Oh, fair, okay, yeah. Also lap service. You're getting kind of dodgy. You are so way too deep into this. <laughs> but also, real drinks. Is water not a real drink? It's like... We have real drinks. That alcohol is the only real drink, apparently. Everything else is fake. You fake water, you fake squash. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> reading on, OP continues, seated two rows ahead of us were three young women, 19 to 22, I'd guess. How old is OP? I don't know. Because he sounds old. Sounds old, yeah. 
They didn't shut up during any of the previews and spoke loudly to each other throughout the movie. Oh, that that annoying. annoys me, which is annoying, but <laughs> unfortunately hardly unique those days. Do you know, I'd have to agree. I get really irritated in movie theatres. Oh my god, Jamie is totally I get a 60 so year old grumpy. already in the cinema. I see it. No, but I have to admit, if there's somebody sitting next to me and they like eat really grossly for the entire film get up and down like six times in an hour and a half spill stuff kick things step on my feet every time they're leaving okay so and everything then that jamie poke is saying me right with now. their elbow and like they're in so like I, my chair is here and their elbow is here this was one and person. i couldn't move over because i'd get touched by this stranger and he touched me multiple times moving he's talking about one per- thank you for your rant this is one person that did it all within oh. one cinema screening and i understand you're upset i was it's livid always, you always I, have the bad luck though i always feel that you are the one that gets stuck with i think these it's widows. just because people annoy me a lot. but like i i never sat next to people like that I don't mind if people have to pee. I don't mind if people eat. But eating, like, with your mouth open, popcorn, <laughs> horrendous. It, it was, like, not just one popcorn tub. There was three, three popcorn yeah. tubs. Three, yeah, and it was, like, so many alcoholic drinks. So the behaviour just gradually got worse and worse. The popcorn annoyed me, too, and I was once eating. You were what? Like, oh, dear, it was you. right in my ear. Because <laughs> he was also leaning towards me for most of the movie. And I was like, who does that? Oh, and, we his, swap seats. and his feet were on the seats in front of him. And I was like, that's just rude. Full on, put his feet through the seats in front onto the armrests. No, but I, t- I totally agree with you. I'm just letting you roll with your arms. I, so, I was so <laughs> livid. I love the cinema. I love seeing movies. But sometimes I really hate the other people there. We went to this other event as well that was like a, a, pub- a public event. And um, somebody whacked you around the back of the head with a bottle. Yeah, they sat down with a glass bottle and just bumped me right on. I'm pretty sure they're not even allowed a glass bottle in the event right area. Yeah. And it really hurt and then hit me like five times with their bag whilst dancing behind me. Yeah, yeah, I recall this too. You you have had very I bad get, luck. And I don't think I'm extra fussy. Uh, I'm a little bit extra fussy. I, I do, th- I'm, gonna, I'm not going to lie, I do think you're a bit extra fussy, but those two scenarios, I would have been annoyed if I was in your seat too. Thank and, you. you know what I did? I, and, I'd have moved... Or just saying, I'd have been like... We couldn't bloop. move, though. In the, We couldn't move at you the totally recent done. one. But, but it's no, fine, it's fine. It would have been really obvious and my social anxiety wouldn't allow me to do I that. I think that's more what it is. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, no, I have to sit here. <laughs> anyway, enough of my movie worries. <laughs> my point is, I can see you relating to this a lot. Yes. But my problem with it is, I love the cinema. Yeah. I love the environment, I love the ambience, I love it when everybody laughs, I love... I don't know, just the feeling of being part of something bigger than there is, myself. You're very keen, what is it, effervescence? Effervescence, absolutely. Oh. I have to say, the more we go now, the more annoying people seem to yeah. be. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if that's because we're older or people are just more annoying. Both. <laughs> anyway, back to the story. Yeah. But what was incredibly annoying, OP continues, starting at about 20 minutes into the movie, one of them got onto her phone. She was only two rows ahead and it was full brightness. Who does that so it would be an understatement to say it was distracting she'd text scroll instagram watch tiktok videos jesus Who's watch tiktok for a videos few during minutes. A why are you there why why are you paying money for no i would be so livid then put it down 10 minutes later out came the phone again i don't yeah why are people there because i see people checking their phone during a movie and i'm like put it away okay can i just say though there is there's etiquette right and you need to be a good person realizing that there are people around you also paying for a joint experience yes that is one thing and i can sort of allow that to happen a little bit more than you can Meh. it's still annoying Meh. but i'm mm-hmm. maybe a bit more forgiving i have than you are. no forgiveness <laughs> what really pisses me off though is like where the frick are the people who work in the cinema who is supposed to stop this there are little yeah. people in the rooms right your whole job is to make sure people are not filming people are not being horrifically antisocial, right well yeah because if somebody can sit on their phone for the whole movie scrolling Playing things out loud like tiktok videos they could sit and film the whole movie but like why has someone not come up and been like excuse me you are distracting other people put your phone away yeah what what i, don't know. I get more annoyed at the fact that the staff aren't doing their job and it's left to uh, aw- you to be awkward. Oh, I'm definitely most annoyed at the person sat on their phone. Yes, but my point is, I feel it feels weird for me to then confront that person because it's not my job. When I'm like, there are literal people sure. whose job it is yes, to I make sure this saying. doesn't happen. Question. Yes. How do you feel about people switching their flashlight on their phone on to get out of the row? That also happened. That happened. Genius. And I was like, <laughs> no, do you know why? Because part of me was like, 
Oh, no, I think it's but fine. But then I still got my feet stepped on. Not by that person, though. Yeah, oh. yeah, with the light shining right on them, stepped on. <laughs> and I'm just like, I can literally see the floor. It is not that dark. Some people, no, genuinely, some people might find it more dark. I think it's totally fine. If you need to go out, I'd much rather use a flashlight than fall over. Fine. Do you know what I mean? It's like a five second inconvenience. But sometimes they didn't, sometimes they didn't. And each time was as messy as the other. It didn't make it. Sorry. Babe, that Mm -hmm. couple were annoying. I hear you. (gasps) Can we move on? (laughs) I'm going to be reading the comments to see if people disagree with me or not. I I agree with you. I'm not disagreeing with you. (laughs) Anyway. (laughs) OP is very mad about this telephone and carries on. After the third time, I said quite loudly put the phone away she looked back gave me a look like shut the f up old man <laughs> okay so we thought that i mean she might be older that. oh yeah he's interpreting the look as that but sure but definitely older yeah but put it down and then 10 minutes later pulled it out again oh, again my full brightness goodness. no i couldn't deal no that is that is, that I, is like i think rude. i'd be like that close just be like i'm giving up i'm leaving the cinema but why should you have to leave I know, because I don't like confrontation. I'd probably go out and say, excuse me, staff member, I don't want to confront somebody. I mean, I don't have to say that. The flipping staff member should be there. Yeah. <laughs> okay, OP <laughs> carries on. So I got a piece of popcorn and threw it at her. <laughs> hit her on the head. Went. As you can imagine, she turned around. Are you effing serious right now? So she said that out yeah. loud. Okay. Yeah, I'm serious. Can't you live without your phone for a couple of hours? Asked OP. Shh, said someone else, I'm assuming. Shut up, said someone else. (laughs) She put it away, and then maybe 20 minutes later, out it came again. Oh my god. I threw another piece of popcorn, which barely missed, but flew by her face. She put the phone away, and it stayed away for the rest of the movie. Nobody stood, nobody clapped. Did OP expect a standing ovation (laughs) for throwing popcorn? Nobody really cared. And that might have been the end of it, except after the movie, she quite bluntly said to her friend as we were walking out, looking at me, that's the a-hole. In telling others about this this morning, I've come to understand that movie etiquette has changed from when I was 20. Back then, of course, there weren't phones, but it was unheard of to engage in behaviour that would be distracting to others. I mean, to be fair, yeah. I think it still is, right? I like, think it's, it it's still not an is. age thing. I'm kind of getting... Look, I'm, o- I'm overall on OP side. Don't be throwing popcorn at people. That is not okay. I, I'm not I'm not accepting that at all. But I can understand your level of frustration. But I also just like... Oh, back in my day, we were nice to people. We cared about other people. I mean, there were assholes then too. And there are assholes now. Yeah, I mean... Get on with it. Back a certain amount of time, you could like smoke in movie theatres, which just sounds like I'd rather someone get their phone out than smoke. Mm-hmm. OP continues, And when phones appeared 30 years ago, you'd never get on it during the movie. And if you had to, you'd walk out and deal with it. But these days, this is par for the course. I, again, I, I don't think, think so. it is. I've actually... The most I've seen is somebody literally get their phone out to check a notification and then put it back or like reply to one text i've never seen someone sit and scroll on their phone i would be really annoyed if people did that now yeah. this is my point and like there's things at the beginning of the every screening right that says put your phone away yeah i put my phone off i'm very old school it goes off for the movie because i don't want a distraction maybe we're particularly like turned on to this though because a lot of the times that we do go to theaters it's for work stuff because mm. this sounds so wanky i'm not saying it to be wanky but we often go to premieres when you're, you're, like, oh, you're, yeah, you're given, given a bag, bag. Yeah. but you have to put it away because you're like embargoed maybe so maybe we're like particularly that. sensitive to it and therefore like our witnessing of what happens is do you know what i mean it's in, a, in a situation where people's people phones are in a jiffy not. bag <laughs> okay um so maybe maybe people do it more than we realize but yeah. i don't think people do it as much i don't we have gone to the cinema a few times where it's not been in that situation and i haven't seen people sat scrolling on their phones i have had annoying kids be too loud or kick seats yeah but yeah not with phones it's, it, my point is op get over yourself with your age this isn't a make america great again situation it was annoying then it's annoying now phones are just bad full stop yeah stop trying to make it a generation thing these people were just buttholes yeah okay carries on anyway if i'm paying 25 dollars per ticket plus food plus drinks expensive expensive. plus parking for a night out and a true theater experience i'd like to enjoy it with what i think is the environment all of that deserves i can watch movies at home and get on my phone all i want for free this is supposed to be different am i out of touch am i the drama is this okay these days and maybe that behavior is not okay but am i the drama for throwing a couple of kernels of popcorn at someone it was certainly effective 
Okay. My personal opinion. Give me a badge. Not the drama. <gasps> I'm going to say you are the drama. I don't think so. Oh, wait, wait. Everybody sucks here. No. Because OP already tried verbally saying, please, like, put the phone away. And I'm just like, do you know what? That person on their phone is breaking so many etiquette, is ruining the experience probably for you and for others. It's a piece of popcorn. It's not going to hurt anybody. Yes, you shouldn't have thrown it. It did make the situation a bit worse, but it worked. To For me, I think... I don't think it warrants an everyone sucks, but OP was not perfect in the situation. I would have said once, excuse me, could you please put your phone away? If they didn't do it, I'd have left the movie theatre to get somebody and say, look, I've tried asking them, they will not put their phone away, it's really ruining the experience. I'd kind of, this maybe sounds a bit Karen of me, I'd either want a refund or for somebody to step in to ask them to put their phone away. I know they can't be forced to. I don't think that's very Karen of you at all. Like, you should not be able to stand allowed. up for yourself. I'm not paying $25 for a ticket to see someone else's phone screen. Plus food, plus drinks, expensive, Everything. plus parking. Yeah, I, I so, hear what you're saying. I hear I hear why OP is annoyed. I But I don't think OP is the drama here. Okay, I, I'm sticking with my everybody sucks here. I'm sticking here. with the drama. <laughs> Here's why. I think like on a one-off context, in this context, I see that it worked. I, I see exactly what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. Mm. My problem is with these situations, I can't look at them as one-off incidents i have to think of them as a, as a principle right and what i'm thinking is if you are going out of your way to physically annoy someone by breaking their physical boundary that's a problem for me what if someone else did it by tugging on someone's hair what if someone else did it by slapping them or you know like pushing them or breaking a, another physical boundary I st- throwing things at something at someone isn't okay what if it wasn't popcorn what if it was something harder that genuinely hurt them yeah what if it was popcorn and it went in their eye and I know I'm sounding like one of those kooky teachers that's like, be careful, blah, 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 blah. You, you just don't know. I, Two I wrongs don't make right. I wouldn't throw popcorn at anybody, like at a stranger. What if you did that and they were super aggressive and really hurt you? I see what you're saying. I see, you're I see this about you in life. <laughs> like, I know this is what your opinion is. You just don't I do it. think that you have like extrapolated hypotheticals up and up and up in your head from this very minor incident i personally don't think it was the right thing to throw the popcorn i wouldn't have done it but i don't think that that behavior is bad enough to warrant an everyone sucks badge on this occasion i still think it was the person on their phone who was the drama Mm -hmm. and op was just a little bit naughty i see what you're saying but i still disagree i grew up in an environment like in the worst part of london where you don't antagonize people because no, if you do I'm, things get very out yes of no i'm i'm not allowed to honk the horn in certain situations of I the car just think well okay it does feel more like you're saying everyone sucks here because you think op potentially invited violence onto themselves and no i'm saying everybody sucks here because i think no matter if some whatever someone's doing right you don't have the right to break somebody else's physical barriers you like you can't be aggressive and throw things at someone i just think that's rude don't intentionally do that it's not the right thing to do and it can lead to something significantly worse if what uh, you i think you're so right what you should have done what i would have done was get up go out and be like hey sorry to be a diva about this but dude my experience is being totally ruined by this asshole that won't put their phone away and what I would totally expect is a refund, a partial refund, because of my time being inconvenienced in that way. And for that someone to go in and say, stop that, and then watch them if they do it again, kick them out cinema. Yes, I do think that was... I keep <laughs> touching your boob, it's just right there. I'm sorry, we're sitting so close today. I... I still maintain, I think you That's have... That's fine. I think, I like, think you're fine for doing your bad. I'm not judging you. extrapolated the popcorn situation. Um... But I'm not surprised because I know you. <laughs> I respect your badge. I yeah. stick with my badge. I, I, I don't think there's one right answer in many of these your situations. Badge too. Should we see what other people have to say? Yeah, and I'd be really interested. Gorgeous features. Please let us know <laughs> what you think. Let us know what you would do. Are you, uh, you are the drama, or are you and everybody sucks here? Yeah. Am I wrong to do this extrapolation in my mind? 
And I'm not saying we shouldn't do things just because of the consequences of others. I'm saying, I'm making it very clear, OP shouldn't have done this because you're breaking someone else's physical boundary. Okay. Don't be th- don't throw things at me. If you're a stranger, you have no right to throw something at me. I, feel like I do think there are some rare circumstances where breaking someone else's physical boundary is important. Like in the situation of a fight or somebody's going to get hurt or whatever. This doesn't constitute that. Yeah. But it's... there are also different levels i think we need to appreciate there are different levels of doing that if op had chucked a bag of maltesers or a drink or, or pulled hair, or pulled hair yeah. obviously that would be wrong so i'm struggling to equate a a single piece of popcorn even if that had hit someone in the eye like it's a single no, piece of popcorn genuine damage you, you don't know okay but she was facing the front she's looking at her phone she definitely wasn't going to be looking at op <laughs> question yeah what if some people were then just like whoops and spill a massive drink quote unquote accidentally on someone that was annoying them what would you think then and what if you were that person that then got spilled on when it wasn't communicated to you that oh, you were doing something wrong yeah I th- I absolutely would have agreed with everyone sucks if OP hadn't verbally tried to ask them to stop beforehand yeah no I, I she see she had what a you're warning saying. I see what you're saying and as I said in I'd this situation I'd have wanted to dump a drink of ice cold coke on her <laughs> and if i was the person next Don't to the do that op i wouldn't have done it i would secretly be grateful that yeah. that happened because this is as far as it went right and yeah. the thing stopped but i still would not condone chucking okay. popcorn at anyone okay should we see what other people say <laughs> yeah Let's i feel go. like we're like not on the same page today which is totally fine but also i was just surprised not the drama says one commenter they need to bring back public punishment for people that use their phones at the movies okay, what do you mean by public punishment <laughs> she should have been made to stand at the front for the rest Stoned of the film tomatoes like that's the vibe i'm getting i agree though punish people there are people like you should be reprimanded mm. for for ruining the experience for other people where are the people at the cinema? Don't they yeah. sit there? Isn't that a thing? Or am I just making that up? Do people not do that anymore? Um, I've not seen it for a while. They Stupid. come in for the last like five minutes. <sighs> people are weird as F saying everyone sucks here. <laughs> <laughs> They're probably the same a-holes who use their phones at movies. You did the right thing, OP. F those little poops. Should have bought more popcorn to dump over their heads. No, this person's just out for blood. <laughs> this this is extreme. This is not the opinion I have. And just saying, I don't use my phone at the movies. No. I say everybody really sucks here because again, I just don't want, I don't like the idea of people taking physical punishment in their own hands. That is not the right thing to do. Not the drama. It drives mm. me insane when people do this. I've thought about throwing popcorn before and it's not like you didn't say something beforehand. She just didn't care. Play stupid games win stupid prizes i love, I love that, that saying, saying. <laughs> apart from when the prize is having popcorn thrown at you yeah, I, <laughs> again in this context i see it and i'm not mm. disagreeing with your badge i know i'm just also not agreeing with your badge because i can't as a matter of principle okay i'm secretly You're... wanting to agree shabba's a too like shabba's too much of a goody too she is <laughs> She wants to be the teacher's pet. It's not a teacher's pet thing. I just think if you say yes to this, where do you stop? It's a, it's a grey line. You've said this. Do you not to, agree? This is just like, I, d- I feel like it's definitely something we disagree on in life sometimes. What? Like the, uh, if you do this, where do you stop? Because there's definitely been like opinions I've had or things I've wanted to do that you're like, hmm. I agree with it in this specific situation, but as a general rule, I don't agree with it. So therefore you shouldn't do it now because what if you do it there, then you could do this. And I'm like, but I'm not going to do this. Let me, I want to do the first thing. Let me, let me put it this way, right? If you and your child were at the cinema mm. and you were like, that person's annoying me, I'm going to throw popcorn at them. What are you teaching that child? Oh yeah, I wouldn't do it in front of a child. So if you wouldn't do it in front of a child because you don't think it's a lesson that should be picked up, isn't that doesn't that mean it's not the right thing to do? I've never said it was the right thing to do. <laughs> I just said I don't think drama. it constitutes someone being a butthole or being a drama person in a situation. I just think it was not completely the appropriate way to go about it. I feel like we're adopting different rules for the same game <laughs> and uh, it's okay. <laughs> Let's move on. I think yeah. we've spoken about this one enough. <laughs> oh, drama. Right, to round off today's dramatic incidents. Let's see if we're on the same page with this one. I know. <laughs> we have a listener submission Ooh. to read through. And remember, gorgeous peaches, if you would like to give us one of your own submissions, you can head over to our website, sharpandtramey.com, onto the page 1-800-DRAMA-POD, mm-hmm. and submit your own drama there. Yes, you can. And um, this one is called Secret 
phone calls. Oh, that's so mysterious. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Take it away, Shaba. I'm a 29-year-old woman, and me and my husband, 29-year-old man, have been together for 10 years. We've been married for three, and we've always been extremely close, Cute. says OP. Okay. Recently, we've hit some friction that I have no idea how to deal with. I've really gotten back into reading and writing, two hobbies of mine that I used to adore, but sort of fell out of love with after uni, and then never seemed to have time for. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Hard relate. Yes. <laughs> Husband says that this has left him feeling alone and unsure of what to do with himself whilst I do my hobbies, as he doesn't really have hobbies that he can do alone, and we've always done most things together. <sighs> um, I have thoughts. I th- do you know what came to mind first? <laughs> He's a grown man. Surely he can find something to do for a bit. Sounds. It sounds to me, because this feels like a very common thing that can happen when couples are super duper close, and that is a mm. lack of independence. Yeah. And... I think it's something that we definitely have had to talk about and actively do things to ensure we maintain some form of independence. Yeah. Not just for hobbies alone, but also like if I need to go to do an errand, I'm like, no, Jamie, come with me, do it with me. And I can get really sad if you've got other things going on and vice versa. Yeah. But sometimes it's a healthy thing to do. Yeah. And that's okay. It may not feel the nicest, but it's okay because we are not jelly beans fused together. Yeah. We are still individual people. Yes. So um, it's not his fault, but it's still husband's problem that he has an issue with this. Yes. Is my thinking. Mm -hmm. Let's read on. Because of this, says OP, I was sort of relieved when he started to become good friends with a colleague of his, 25-year-old woman Mm -hmm. and they started hanging out after work giving me time to myself which i've loved sounds very healthy so far yeah but the other week they'd gone on a night out and the following evening he was very insistent that i can call my mum whilst he went into the shower this is weird that's interesting it was a tough anniversary for my mum so i didn't initially think anything of it but as he went upstairs my mum didn't answer my call so i sat and i read instead that's when i heard Not the shower running, but my husband on the phone to his friend slash colleague. (sighs) He always uses a loudspeaker so I could hear both voices, but I didn't listen closely enough to follow the conversation. I didn't want to appear like I'd been eavesdropping. So when he came down, I said, you were gone a while, expecting him to say, oh yeah, I decided to call colleague's name for a debrief about last night. But instead he just shrugged it off and didn't say anything. (sighs) Oh. Am I the drama for being hurt and a little bit paranoid that he decided to keep the conversation from me? I also feel like he was super insistent that I phone my mum at the same time so that I wouldn't hear him. I've always trusted him wholeheartedly and he's never given me reason not to, but keeping this call a secret from me when we usually tell each other everything is really setting off alarm bells in my mind. That would set off alarm bells for me about you. This is freaking spicy, dude. Yeah. Whoa. Like... No, yeah, if you were like, hey, Jamie, call your mum whilst I go shower. And I was like, okay. And you were like, yeah, no, no, really, call your mum. Okay. And then I hear you on loudspeaker. The only thing is, who has a secret phone call on loudspeaker? Like, that is the most, like, non, what is it, inconspicuous way? (laughs) Or is it conspicuous? I know what you mean. It's just it's confusing no i would i would have questions but i would just say to you i'd be like oh did you have a good phone call i'd literally just be like oh no i had you on the phone do you have a good chat not to be like nosy not to get up in your business but just because that's the kind of relationship we had if you had me on the phone you'd be like hey who are you talking to sorry i'm thinking my, my silence yeah. just because there's so many thoughts going on in my mind okay i have a question for you um do you think that op was in the wrong for instead of saying Oh, hey, you were on the phone to your colleague. Was that okay? Hmm. But instead being like, oh, you were gone for a while, expecting the husband to then be like, oh, yeah, I was on the phone. Like, that was essentially a test being put there. Do you think that that sense of test is wrong? Hmm. I don't know if I saw it as a test because I feel like OP was coming at it from the perspective of, like, maybe not wanting to sound like they were prying, but just fully Hmm. 100% knowing like feeling like they knew their husband would just be like oh yeah i called so and so before i had my shower and not having any thought in their mind that he would try and hide that so instead of them I, the way i read that was like instead of going oh hey who are you talking to in case that came across a little bit like pushy op was like oh you were up there for a while to not be like i'm testing to see if you tell me the truth but to be like oh Mm. because i want you to come to me with that information and i know you're going to tell me anyway and then being completely blindsided when he lied if it was seen as a test though i think that that's perfectly appropriate in this 
in this this situation. I I wouldn't have said that that was wrong. I wouldn't say it was wrong. I personally would have then followed it up with a, oh, it wasn't about your phone call. I have a second question. (laughs) Did OP's husband shower? Yeah. Yeah. Did he shower? Because <laughs> if, like, you just shrugged, I that is really weird to me. Well, he shrugged it off. Oh, and didn't say anything. Oh, yeah, no, okay. No. Mm. And then you don't hear the shower running. Yeah. But you hear that they're on a phone call. Well, because the husband thought OP was calling also their mother. Call. It's d- like... I would be hurt. Yeah. I would be really hurt. I would be paranoid too. And I... But me being me... I would be like, um, excuse me, Jamie, I know you weren't in the shower. Yeah. You were just calling... So-and-so. Sandra. <laughs> so, you know, I like, know should I be nervous? You know, and then, like, have a conversation. If they're like, oh, babe, no, blah, 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 like, go from there. But yeah. I, I would be paranoid. I would definitely have brought it up. I'm also not judging OP, though, for not bringing it up. Because it might be that that has taken OP by such surprise. And it's yeah. like, oh, shit. Yeah. Like, this is not normal. Should I be feeling this way? So I'm not judging OP in any way. Okay, hang on. Let me just say, totally not the drama. Oh, that yeah, yeah. Bad. Absolutely not the drama. And not I feel at all. sorry for you, OP, because I too would be feeling not great in this situation. Mm-hmm. For me, my advice would be, honesty is the best policy. Dude. Yeah, I think you just need to ask the question. And you know what I would say? I would literally sit down and be like, hey, Jamie, I have something to talk to you about. <clears throat> you know that time that you went shower? You didn't go in the shower. I couldn't call my mum because she didn't pick up and I heard that you were on the phone to someone else. I didn't bring it up because I didn't want to, like, I didn't think anything of it, but it's making me feel some kind of way. That you didn't, that you lied to me, that you, like, you ignored. It wasn't a lie, but well, yeah. You it's making me feel some kind of way that you had that phone call and you didn't tell me and then you didn't question. shower. So, like, I'm just checking, is everything okay? Are we okay? Like, should we be talking about this? Mm. Um, because, yeah. It's okay for him to have a friend. It's okay for him to have phone calls with his friend without his wife being present Mm -hmm. but what is bizarre is is, the lie yeah (laughs) is just not saying yeah i was on the phone to my friend because if there was nothing wrong with it go call your mum yeah that is weird it does feel a bit uncomfortable i'd definitely say op not the drama and i'd absolutely i would approach you about this and it's not in a i need to know who you're talking to all the time it's just a hey why did you not feel like you could tell me you know what even if it was a feeling of Sorry, what did you just say? You said something and I totally lost my beam. It's like, you don't need to tell me everyone you're talking to all the time. I'm not expecting that. It's just, uh, I would, like, I would not expect you to try and cover up a conversation you had that I overheard or that I knew about. Yes. Or that you were trying to hide. Yeah. My point was just to say, I I think, I hope OP realises and anybody who's in a relationship realises that it's perfectly natural and normal to feel um some kind of way to feel some kind of jealousy if mm. someone else is talking and you shouldn't keep those feelings bottled up talk about it talk about yeah. it yeah the one situation i could think of but it still doesn't excuse him not just saying yes i was on the phone to my friend is if there was a private thing the friend wanted to tell him that she was like i, d- I don't want anyone else to know about it i don't want anyone to overhear it's nothing dodgy that the husband is doing but he's protecting his friend's privacy but that still doesn't warrant not telling your wife that you were on the phone to somebody you just yeah. don't need to say what it was about exactly like to be but he fair, might have just approached it very wrong i'm just saying don't jump to the worst conclusions before yes. having a conversation fair enough there have been times for example where i've been like oh you know what my friend so and so is not feeling too fantastic we're gonna have a little chat yeah and um, so i'm gonna leave you downstairs babe because this is kind of a private thing bye fair yeah fair not a problem it is feeling really weird as well that he's like oh you can't spend time alone and now I'm going to go spend time with other people mm. because you're reading. And now he's maybe using that as an opportunity. If this is going down the case of maybe he's inappropriately close with yeah. this colleague slash friend, that feels some kind of way that you're like, oh, sorry, because you're trying to do something with your hobby. I yeah. now have a pass to go and speak with other people. Yeah. And it, it almost it sounds like he's a bit of a codependent limpet. And I don't mean that in an offensive way. A and codependent it's ca- limpet. Yeah. And now that his wife is taking some, rightfully taking some time for herself, he's limpeted onto somebody else because maybe he struggles being on his own. But that also needs to be a conversation of like, look, I'm struggling because we've always been very codependent and I struggle to have independence from you. Also, if you want to be social and go and speak with your other friends whilst I'm doing things alone, totally fine. Totally fine. Don't be weird about it. Don't don't lie. (laughs) Don't try and hide it. That's weird. Communication. I'm, sorry, sorry. I'm really sorry, OP. Yeah, I'm sorry too. 
communication Ooh. is key. Yes, you're totally not the drama. Have that open conversation. See where it goes. Yeah. And I think Jamie's advice is good, though. Don't think... Uh, like, don't automatically jump to the worst conclusions. Because there yeah. could be 101 different things He could have just fumbled and been like, I can't tell her what it was about because it was private with my friend and I don't know how to not say it if she knows we were on the phone together. He could have just been a bit of a numpty about it, but there's actually nothing secretive going on with him. Um, or maybe there is something secretive going on. Or maybe there is. But, it, you know, there's multiple different options to so definitely have that chat first. And the biggest red flag to look out for, in my opinion, is how he approaches you talking about it. If you're just being mm. vulnerable and being like, hey, I'm feeling some kind of way because of this thing that happened. I wanted to address it. If he gets in any way defensive or tries to mm. invalidate your feelings about it, that's a big or red flag Or tell you to me. it's your fault. Regardless of whether it was a very wholesome, innocent or non-innocent conversation. Yeah. That's what I keep an eye out for. Yeah. Hugs to OP. Mwah. Hugs. All right, my love. This has been a fun episode. This has it's been, been interesting. Been a roller coaster. Yeah, I feel like maybe we're not on the same page, and that's all right. Oh yeah, yeah, but we're not. No, we're on the same page, <laughs> but just different paragraphs. You'd throw popcorn, and I wouldn't. No, I wouldn't throw popcorn. I just don't think it makes someone a, like the drama to throw the one piece of popcorn. I, I see. Your it, point, we're just you? going, we're seeing it on different levels of wrongness. Sure, sure. That's all. Okay. But we agree that it is wrong, and don't worry, I will not be teaching our children to do it. <laughs> I love you. I love you too. Oh, thank you so much for joining us, Gorgeous Peaches. Yes, thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, maybe you want to consider, I don't know, maybe giving us a little rating maybe, on our podcast yeah, platform. You know, like nice. over on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, yeah. which would super duper help us out. Thank you. That would be lovely. And if you're watching this on YouTube, please feel free to get your juicy little butts downstairs in the comments section. Let's have a little chat. We'll do a thumbs up. Just remember to be kind. And subscribe if you want to as well. I'd highly recommend it. <laughs> That's it for now, my loves. We'll see you next time with another episode. Be kind. Much love. And have a great day. Bye. Bye.